Yeah, so picture this. You got four people in a dark room negotiating a gigantic omnibus spending bill worth several trillion dollars, violating the public trust, adding more damage to the economy. Okay, I can't stand this story. I just can't stand this story. And we bring in our great friend from North Dakota, Senator Kevin Kramer. Senator Kramer, uh, we have talked about this before. If you would allow me, I, I had a good interview yesterday with Mike Pence, uh, who's a friend of yours and mine. I just want to play it, if you allow me. Please take a listen to what Mike said. It's about 25 seconds. Congress ought to just pass a continuing resolution. This mm -hmm. business of passing some new large omnibus spending bill, uh, one more shot for Democrats uh, losing the House of Representatives to pile spending and debt on the American people ought to be rejected. They ought to, they ought to pass a flat continuing resolution bill that you understand uh, better than most. We've got to make putting our fiscal house in order and putting America on a trajectory of a balanced budget and lower debt for the future. You know, Senator Kramer, he said it in his usual straightforward way, and I just think he's dead right on all counts. I mean, what could happen here is a fiasco. Anyway, what are you thinking? What are you hearing? Sure. Well, first of all, with, in response to a, a CR versus a, an omnibus spending bill, what the vice president didn't say is how long the continuing resolution ought to be. Because if we were to have a one-year continuing resolution that takes us at least to the end of this fiscal year, now we have some serious problems related to our funding priorities, particularly for the men and women in uniform and our military, which needs help badly. A short-term continuing resolution that would, say, be to the end of January, Perhaps that would make some sense, but then we'd have to make darn sure that we had the discipline in that short time frame to make sure we get our work done by the end of January because the next step, remember Larry, the next fiscal year has to begin with the next Congress, which starts January 3rd, and I hate to see us start way behind again. Now, here's why we end up in these situations. And by the, by, by the way, I'm not sure the room is dark, but you're right, it's very few people, and most of them aren't elected anything. They're, they're staff people. And, um, but Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden have figured out that if they don't have a single appropriations bill or a single appropriations hearing or a single appropriations vote throughout the course of a year and pile it all on at the end of the year, they have a better chance of, of adding their priorities, which are always non-military or non-defense discretionary priorities, as though the American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act weren't enough. Um, they, they have a better chance of doing that because adults in the room and fiscal hawks that care about our military don't want to put our military in further jeopardy with these continuing resolutions. So it's, it's a dilemma for sure, but the length of a CR would matter a great deal to me. Yeah, but Senator, okay, but put, I don't, the length of the CR, I, we could push it back till January. I don't care about that. What I care yeah. about, look, I, I want to fund the military too. I, I'm there. What I care about is a process that examines what you and I have yes. talked about. It's called regular order. Yes, All yes. I'm saying is you've got 12 appropriation subcommittees in both houses who are supposed to look at their areas, call in witnesses, liberals, conservatives, debate the merits of the policy, debate the merits of the spending level, and then come back and have a look at the package. None of this ever happens anymore. You can put four no. people in the room, you're right, sir, with senior staff. Okay, I've been involved in this. I've actually seen it. Sure. I mean, I'm probably culpable in this. But the point is, the public is the loser because yes. you're talking about an increase of perhaps $2 trillion on top of what's already been spent, which is $5 trillion. And what little progress we've made on inflation will go out the window, and more inflation means a worse economy. You see where I'm going on this? I I totally where did. are the Republicans? I mean, let, here, one more, Kevin, and, and I'll let you respond. No. I know the Senate is difficult because it's going to be whatever it's going to be, 50, 50, 51, 49. I get that. But the House, if you give the House a chance, they will establish regular order for the next right. fiscal year. But if you yes. go through this omnibus bill, God knows how much to spend, there will be no regular order for another year. That's what's bothering me. 
Sure, but but what what bothers me is that late January turns into late April or May or June, and then you're you know just a few months from the end of the fiscal year, and you haven't begun the next fiscal year. All of this is supposed to be done a year in advance, so we're behind the eight ball now. So time management is very important, um, Larry, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But we need to be careful to not make the CR too long if that's what we end up doing. That said. That, remember, the House is responsible for starting the process of appropriation. So you're exactly right. The good guys are in charge over in the House. I, I'm confident that a Speaker McCarthy, first of all, I'm confident that there's going to be one, and, and that when he is Speaker, that he can put in motion regular order. What I worry about is can he put into motion quickly enough regular order so that you have two fiscal years worth of, of uh, you know, appropriations process as opposed to chaos. And so it's, it's, it's a fine balance. It's going to be difficult. I'm all about it if we can get there. But I do worry about what happens if we get a late start on next year's uh, well, budget. Look at, uh, I, w I worry about the level of spending, the merits yes. of the spending. You know, yes. they want, I mean, here's something to look out for. You know this is coming. The Democrats want the child tax credit Hundred yes. billion dollars plus per year. It's a government check. It's a refundable credit. All right. And yes. guess what? No work requirements. Right. Welfare without work. And that includes the old AFTC. That includes food stamps. That includes housing. People don't want to work in this country. And that's right. the kind of thing that I'd like to see in a regular order hearing. Okay, yes. a lot of people would come in. We're running out of time. My producers are yes. yelling the heck out of me. We need to talk <laughs> more about this. But I'm just telling you, you know, four people in a dark room, this is no way to conduct economic it policy. Is, it That's is all not. I'm saying. And it, and it benefits the left and it hurts yes. the economy, it yes. hurts the right. And it hurts our reputation as legislators yes. because we're not doing this under the bright sunshine. You're absolutely right. 100%. Senator Kevin Kramer, thank you as always.